Welcome back to Mud Mods and Beers. Today it's everything 12 volt in the canopy. We've just finished the budget canopy build. This is my top five tips on what you should do, in my opinion, when you're putting a 12 volt system together. First essential thing that you're gonna to need to do with any 12 volt build is plan out what you want. That is the most important part of the whole build. I have done that with this little piece of paper. I'll zoom it in here so you can hopefully have a bit of a look at it. Um, this was for me, so I, I drew this about two or three weeks ago and that's pretty much what that is. There's the drawer fridge, there's the lithium battery, there's the control box, the shunt, the big control box. That was my roadmap as to what I wanted and to make sure it all fits. So that's my first essential tip. You gotta make a plan. So number two tip, and I've written it on the bottom of this map, supplies. So you gotta work out what you've got and what you wanna buy. And it's all well and good saying, I wanna buy a fridge, I wanna buy an oven, I wanna buy a drawer. But then you've gotta remember, I've written down things here like lugs. How many lugs do you need? How many Anderson plugs do you need? What length of cable? How thick is your cable? Because obviously coming from the battery is going to be a thicker cable than coming from the solar, for example. Um, I've got here recessed light panels to, to put in. I had the hardcore lights. I didn't have these recessed light panels. Cable ties. Everybody needs cable ties. Um, nuts to put the panel onto the back. This is a uni strut, so I need a uni strut nuts. How many? Because what you don't want to do is be in the middle of the build on a Saturday afternoon. You've had a couple of beers. You can't drive to the shop or Bunnings. Get everything so you don't have to stop. Get it all done in one go. My third tip is you gotta know how much battery power you need because there's no point in buying a 400 amp hour battery if you're only using three amps on lights a day. You know, that's silly. You're, you're over capitalizing on your battery. So work it back. What do you need? How much does the fridge run? How much does the lights pull? How much does the uh, battery monitor pull? What is the camper trailer, or the, sorry, the rooftop tent fan pull? Write down all your amperages and what, what's gonna draw out all day in a 24 hour period. How much will you get back in from the sun or from the engine? Then you can work out what size battery you need because the less you need, the less you're gonna spend. Everything I'm doing is to a budget. Battery is probably one of the most expensive items in the whole system. Make sure you don't overcapitalize. Probably my fourth big tip is how many lights do you need? Like really how many lights do you need? Um, I've worked out that I wanted three lights because in other canopy setups I've had two lights inside, two on the door, so four lights. Um, and, and the lights all draw power, but in this build I've done one on each door and one in the middle. I've run two, the one in the middle and the one on the passenger side, which is where I'll be most often, through one light switch. And the one on this door is the second light switch. Um, because you might want to be around here and not be over there, save power. You don't want all the lights on if you don't have to have them on. Um, plan out lights. Lights make a camping, it's so much nicer experience if the campsite's well lit and you can dim these down, you can create a mood. Lighting is so important. Don't forget the lighting. And my last tip um, is future-proofing. Build this. Beautiful, like this is set and forget now. It's charging itself. It, this is gonna be a beautiful system for me for many years to come. But I still haven't got some dreams that I have for here, like induction cooking. I'd love an induction cooktop. So I've left enough room on this headboard to eventually put an inverter in and then run my induction cooktop through a drawer on the other side. It's future-proofed. I've left room for stuff that I can't afford to buy at the minute. So always, always plan with the end in mind what would my perfect system look like and leave gaps for where you can put stuff in at a later date. So you don't have to rip everything off the wall and start again. The inverter, I can just screw onto that back wall, straight down into the batteries, job's done. Loving it. So there are my five tips, my five tips. These are only my opinions on building the best 12 volt setup to a budget. So please leave any comments below if you've got any more tips. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one or out there somewhere. Thanks.